Welcome to, back to my channel. My name is Gina Harris and I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome to Soul Food and Grace. And if you've been following me, um, you know that we are reading the Bible uh, for, for a year, this whole year, 2020, we're reading the Bible and we are in the New Testament and I have a deep voice again today. So please forgive me. I don't know what's going on. I have my Joe. And maybe that will help me. It's been crazy cold here in Louisiana, like freezing. Nothing like I'm used to in Idaho, but it's been cold. Um, okay, you guys, so we are on day 39. Can you believe it? We're on day 39. We are reading Acts 28 through, or excuse me, 26 through 28. And tomorrow we start on our journey in uh, Romans. I can't believe how quick it's going by. And this, actually, we are reading um, the part where, you know, that talks about Paul's journey um, to Rome. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's been, uh, it, for me, um, I was thinking about this this morning before I hit the button to go live. And it's like, how long, how many, how, how much he committed his life, right? Oh, and I wanted to share something with you guys. Um, one of our viewers, it was really cool. One of our viewers sent um, these to me. I thought was really, really cool. And they got it from um, the the website that I shared, um, uh, christianbooks.com. Anyways, I thought it was really cool. Uh, I just got them last night, so I haven't had time to really dig in. But I thought this was really awesome. And I don't know if you guys, um, you know, where you're at with your studying and um, if you're doing the SOAP method. But this was really cool because it's an overview. It's Know Your Bible, all 66 books explained and applied. And it literally, it's just like two pages for each book. And it, it goes over. So let me see Acts. Let me just look at that. Um, so it goes over the author. It goes over the date it was written. It goes over in 10 words or less. Um, details, please. Quotable and unique and unusual. And so what? So it gives these top little things. And I thought it was really awesome. And um, like the book of Acts where we're at. It says, um, author, I, I'm probably going to do this with every, you know, in the beginning when we hit the first chapter, you know how I usually do an overview anyway, I'll probably pull this. This is really cool. Um, so the author not stated, but traditionally attributed to Luke, a Gentile physician, a missionary companion to the apostle Paul and the author of the gospel of Luke. And the date was covering events of the AD 30s through 60s. Acts was probably written sometime between AD 62 and 80. And in 10 words or less, the Holy Spirit's arrival heralds the beginning of Christian church. And um, I won't go into any more because I want to make it relevant to today, but I thought it was really cool. Um Actually, I'm going to read because the other part's kind of long. Uh, unique and unusual. Acts tells the first Christian martyr, Stephen, stoned to death for blaming Jewish leaders for the death of Jesus. Acts also depicts the gospel's tr uh, transition from a purely Jewish message to one for all people and the beginning of the Christian missionary movement. So that's cool. That's cool. So yeah, like tomorrow, since we're starting in Ro um, Romans, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll read um, this tomorrow. And it's literally just an overview. I thought it was really good. So how awesome is that? And then this, um, I'm actually going to take some time because there's little pointers in how to, how to study the Bible. It's, um, it kind of talks about how, you know, most people, um, you know, studying the Bible, it can be daunting and that it doesn't have to be. They're giving just little pointers to make it, you know, so you can, you can finish. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to look at that. And if I get, you know, maybe by tomorrow, I'll have most of it kind of looked at so I can share that with you guys too. But okay, we're going to dig in. So again, we started at um, 26. And it's 26, 27, and 28. And yesterday we also talked about 
how prayer changes God's heart, right? And so if you miss that video, be sure I always add the the day before's link to these videos just to help you guys in case you miss it. Um, and so I want to cover, um, they have people in focus on this. We've been doing this through this study. I think it's really cool because it kind of gives a deeper insight on the people. And this is Agrippa. So it says Roman's heart. Members of the Herod family were native to Palestine, Palestine, Palestine. I'm not sure. Um, but the loyalties lay elsewhere. In Rome, uh, where their bread was buttered, see House of Herod, the Herods play a leading role in the New Testament history, but mostly a negative one. Agrippa, known to historians as Herod Agrippa II, was the last of the series of Herods who ruled Palestine. Uh, on Romans' behalf. Is it Palestine or Palestine? Palestine. Palestine. I'm pretty sure. You guys, please forgive me. <laughs> okay. His great uncle had beheaded John the Baptist and presided over one of Jesus's trials. The man's father was ordered uh, the massacre of baby boys after Jesus's birth. Now, Agrippa had to pass judgment on the Apostle Paul, fiery missionary, of the new cause. Educated in Rome, Agrippa came to power at the age of 17 when his father died. Apparently, Agrippa picked up some loose morals in Rome as well. His sister Bernice, who accompanied near to hear Paul's trial, also uh, was also his mistress. She tried marriage a number of times and was mistress to powerful men, but always returned to her brother. Their incest fueled Roman gossip. Nonetheless, Paul assumed the Agrippa had some background knowledge of the gospel. As overseer of the Jewish temple, he knew about the increasing number of Jesus' followers and their claims that the prophet's predictions of the Messiah had been fulfilled. Agrippa, however, brushed off Paul's appeal. He had not, uh, he was not about to get the biblical discussion in front of the Roman governor. Um, as far as we know, Agrippa stayed loyal to Rome until the end when Jerusalem revolted against Nero in AD 66. Agrippa backed Rome completely. He was involved in Rome, Rome's uh, complete destruction of Jerusalem and its temples uh, in AD 70. His death marked the end of the Herods. Life questions. Agrippa put his loyalty to Rome above God's claims. Do you feel any conflict between competing loyalties? Where and why? I can't imagine having that kind of responsibility at 17. Although, you know, the age thing was much different, right? Because they had kids you know, in their teens and now it's just different. So their life was much different, but, um, you know, it talks about Paul ashore on Malta and then Paul's arrival to Rome and, um, Paul preaches at Rome under guard. So I am going to read a little bit of this, um, at, you know, cause it says at the end, the very, very end of Acts, it says that he stayed there for two years. So as he, um, you know, was preaching at Rome, I'm going to read, uh, let's see, it's 2817. I'm going to start there. Three days later, he called together the local Jewish leaders. When they had assembled, Paul said to them, my brothers, although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. They examined me and wanted to release me because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death. The Jews objected. I was compelled to make an appeal to Caesar. I certainly did not intend to bring any charge against my own people. For this reason, I have asked to see you and talk to you. It is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. They replied, we have not received any letters from Judea concerning you, and none of our people who have come from there has reported anything bad about you but we want you we want to hear what your views are for we know that people everywhere are talking against this sect they arranged to meet paul on a certain day and came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying he witnessed to 
to them from the morning till the evening explaining about the kingdom of God and from the laws of Moses and the prophets. He tried to persuade them about Jesus. Some of some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. They disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul had made this final statement. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth of the ancestors when he said this through Isaiah the prophet. And this is actually 28, 26, and 27. And it says at the bottom, the study part, it says this OT message or passage, Isaiah 6, 9 through 10, was quoted by Jesus. And to make a similar point, Paul too had alluded to it in the letter to the Romans. So it says, go to this people and say, you will never, you will be ever hearing about, scratch that, scratch that. I know when I start like jumbling up the sentence and I fix it and I jumble it up again, I need to just breathe, start again. Okay. Go, um, go to this people and say, you will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed with their, they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I will heal them. Therefore, I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles and they will listen. For two whole years, Paul stayed in there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. And um, yeah, so that OT passage. So yeah, I was going to say when I read that, I was like, oh, we read, read that and we did cover it in um, the book of Matthew. In Matthew, we covered that. I believe I read that too. Um, so anyways, wow, what a, what a long journey for him, right? And even if you guys have your Bibles and they have, you know, the maps on um, where you know, his ministry went. It's, it's amazing. Right. And so again, you guys, tomorrow we're going to be reading, um, we're starting to read in Romans and I would love to know how things are going for you. Please, please do share. And, um, again, you know, we're doing this live each and every morning. And I was even thinking that when we finish, um, and we start, we're going to, we're going to continue to go, um, you know, through the New Testament. But then when, when we start in Genesis, I may shift to weekly videos. I kind of thought about that. Um, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We'll see the engagement. We'll see, you know, but I thought definitely the New Testament will just finish off this 90 days with daily videos and um, take a look at it then and see if you guys are still loving that every day or if it's just like we move to maybe even once or, or you know, twice a week um, when we start in Genesis. So what do you think about that? I'd love to know your feedback on that. Okay. Because this is about you too, not just about me. Okay, you guys. So as we end in prayer, um, I hope that you continue if you're listening live or anytime soon where this was recorded. Hope you have a great weekend and I hope your weather hasn't been too, too crazy. I know we're all experiencing crazy weather right now. So uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for waking me. Thank you for bringing the brothers and sisters that you have called for this message, this video, and this time that we are are reading your word, Lord. And I just ask that you guide us, you lead us and you direct our footsteps and God just, um, bring the people in our lives where we also can be that light of you as well, Father God. And just want to lift our brothers and sisters to you today, any struggles that they may be going through, Father God, and just ask that you take the burden so they don't feel that they have to carry them, Father God, and may they get the solutions for the, the struggles that they're going through. And we just love you, Lord, and I thank you, and in Jesus' name, 
Amen. <clears throat> okay, you guys. Tomorrow, day 40. It is day 40 tomorrow, and it is Romans 1 through 3. And I love you guys so much. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.